The mode dial is where you turn your camera to full automatic control and forget it. Millions of point and shoot users never take this setting off of auto, but we're going to. First, we'll divide the selections into groups so they make more sense. When you set the camera on auto, it does four things for you. It focuses the lens, it meters the amount of light and the distance to your subject, it sets the aperture, and finally it sets the shutter speed. You snap the photo, you get an average exposure. Nikon expanded on this theme with the settings on this side of the dial, called the scene modes. Maybe you had similar scene modes on your point-and-shoot camera, but never got around to trying them out. Know this, the scene modes on this camera can be powerful tools for getting great photographs. When you select one of these exposure modes, the camera automatically changes the settings to match the shooting situation. This allows you to document a bike race or shoot photos of your child's birthday party without having to put a lot of thought into your camera settings. You get to be involved in the moment rather than looking at the camera dials and displays. For the portrait setting, the aperture is set wide open for a shallow depth of field. This keeps the subject in focus but blurs the background which makes the subject really stand out. Landscape works the opposite way. The camera dials the aperture closed creating what's called an infinite depth of field. That means everything in the frame is in focus. For example, in this image, the house on the far bluff is just as sharply focused as the fence post. Because the opening in the lens is small, the shutter must stay open longer to collect enough light. The camera sets the shutter speed long enough to create a correct exposure, but not so long as to risk any blur from the camera movement. You can use the landscape setting at night. Since the shutter speed will be slow, be sure to secure the camera on a tripod. The close-up setting assumes you'll be taking macro photos of small subjects, such as flowers or insects. This setting will allow you to take sharply focused photos within several inches of your subject. If you want to get in even closer, you'll need to switch to a macro lens. The sports setting uses a fast shutter speed to freeze the subject and background. When you press the shutter release halfway, the lens will continually focus on the subject behind the center focus point and it will refocus as your subject moves. This setting works well for photographing children, animals, or any subject that might move unexpectedly. When you set the dial to night portrait, the flash will fire to correctly illuminate the subject. The camera sets a slow shutter speed so the sensor has more time to collect light from the background. The result is a photo that shows both the subject and the background. Finally, this flash offsetting is just like full auto except the flash will not fire. Think of these settings as flavors of automatic. They can be very useful if you don't have time to make decisions about the camera settings. But if you want more control over your images, consider using the settings on this side of the mode dial. Programmed auto, shutter priority auto, aperture priority auto, and manual. Before we get into the advanced exposure modes, we need to learn how the camera focuses in the auto and scene modes. With the camera set to auto, look at the control panel or the shooting information screen. You will see a small box containing 11 plus signs. This display indicates that when you press the shutter release to initiate autofocus, the camera will consider the entire frame and then choose a subject for focus. This is the default autofocus setting. It will work for most situations, but if the camera picks up the wrong subject, the resulting photo will be out of focus. Next, turn the mode dial to close up. Now you have a choice. You can use the center focus point, which is already active in the close up mode, or you can choose a new focus point. While looking through the viewfinder, press the multi-selector arrow keys to reposition the focus point. With this method, you can frame the subject however you like and then move the focus point to cover it. You can also set the focus point in the sports mode. This setting is a little different because while the camera focuses on the subject behind the selected focus point, the other points will remain active. If the subject moves, the other focus points will take over and maintain the focus. Whether you change the focus point in close-up or sports mode, you will first need to make sure that the focus selector lock is disabled. You can use focus point selection with the other exposure modes, but this requires changing a custom setting. 
We will show you how later in the advanced focus topics.